Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pack Online. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. You know, if you're not part of our Pack Online Facebook group already, then I encourage you to join us. It's one of the ways that you can stay connected as family. It's one of the ways you can hear about what's happening in our community. And this is important as we've been socially distancing, we want to make sure that we still feel together and that you feel like you're part of the loop. So make sure again, our Facebook group, Pack Online, stay connected, join the group. Now, speaking of family, we wanna say thank you for those of you who have continued to give. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness. And the way to do that again, folks, is mypack.tv slash give. And we know that every time that we give, we watch God faithfully take care of our needs and build his kingdom. And we would hate for you to miss out on that. So thank you for being part of this and thank you for continuing to give in this way. Now, next week is down week. And on Down Week, we love to bring groceries here and collect them and then share them with our community and those who are in need. The best way to do that would be to gather the groceries and to bring them here to the church throughout the next week. And, and if you find this a struggle, here's one of the ways that my family has made this extra fun and involves the entire family. We take our children and we let them choose one of the cupboards in our pantry. And when they do that, we take everything that's non-perishable out of that cupboard and we put it in the bag and that's what we deliver. Now there's two parts about this which is extra fun. One, we get to give as a family. We're learning generosity and we're passing that on to our next generation. Secondly, we get to give what we would eat. We get to give a personal gift. And, and as in making it more personal, I think the gift becomes that much richer. So again, I encourage you, bring your groceries next week and let's bless our community. So today's big announcement is about August 23rd. On August 23rd, we're gonna begin live services here in Portage. Now that service is gonna start at 10 a.m. and it won't include kids ministry yet. But don't worry because on September 13th, both in Nipua and Portage, we're gonna have live services including kids ministry and we're so excited. Now, you need to know that we're gonna follow all of Manitoba's safety guidelines for those services. And to find out that information, you're gonna to want to stay tuned to our website, to our Facebook group online, and to our emailing list. There, you're gonna get all the details you need to know. Man, we hope that you're as excited as we are to again see you face to face and to worship together. So stay tuned. So if you've been part of the Pack family long, you'll know that we follow an upside down party rhythm. Up means that we focus our relationship on Jesus. Side, our relationship with one another. Down, so that we can serve like Jesus and party because we have a good God who gives good gifts. Today is side week. So why don't you stand with me in your living room or wherever you're watching and let's read this opening prayer together. Jesus, thank you that I am a sheep in your large flock. Thank you for new eyes to see those I need to forgive, those who are lonely, those who need space, those ready to give up, those who need encouragement, and those who need to know they are welcome here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love to care for these, my brothers and sisters. In your name, amen. Why don't you stay standing and let's sing together as Regan leads us in worship.
disguise. Come back to communion. Come back to the start. Run into wide open spaces. Places waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Places waiting. Your 
Good morning. Glad you've joined with us today. Uh, my name is Kevin Fawcett. I'm one of the pastors here at PAC. Uh, you know, and I feel after the, the intensity of that children's moment, I feel like I just need to let you know uh, uh, little Tamara is meeting with some prayer counselors right now and uh, working through a few issues. I think, I think she'll be okay in the end of all this. Um, hey, uh, some of you took advantage of our curbside cafe today and uh, got a free coffee out of the deal. Uh, that's right. We were giving away free coffee, free muffins at the curbside cafe today. Uh, it's pretty awesome that as a church, we can take some of the blessings that we have and share it with each other, but beyond each other, with our community. So there were people heading over to, uh, to Canada Inns, and uh, there were some uh, bikers that picked up some free coffee on their way out of town, and people taking coffees into the market as well. Um, just really cool that we can do that kind of thing as a church. Uh, so hey, as we get going here this morning, uh, actually I actually want to say, uh, wish you a happy anniversary. I don't know if you realize it, but uh, in a way, this is our anniversary, our one-year anniversary. You see, it was a year ago, uh, the August long weekend, last year, me and my family drove out from Saskatchewan to have a candidating weekend here at PAC. And we had uh, really a pretty full, rich, uh, full and rich weekend. So we started Saturday morning, uh, we had brunch with a number of the elders. So I got to meet uh, Pat and Irene and Ferdy, and we were talking about PAC and the heart of PAC and how I might fit in to the midst of all of that. Uh, it was a great morning uh, talking that through and spending some time in prayer with some of the elders. Uh, then in the afternoon, we spent some time looking at some houses around here, uh, and then at supper time, our family went over to Nathan and Tamara's house, and Dave and Mel Britton joined us there. And that was sort of a chance for us to dig into the staff dynamic here at PAC, to hear what it's like to work here, for, for them to ask me some questions about, uh, about what it would be like for me to work here. And uh, aside from the fact that our son Aiden rolled in a cactus outside of the Westlake's house that night and got cactus quills all through his leg, uh, it was a pretty awesome night. So yeah, maybe more awesome for us than it was for Aiden uh, at the end of the day. But Sunday morning, I 
got in a truck with Jake and drove up to Nipua. And that was my chance to meet the people up in Nipua for the first time. I met Morley and met Wes and a few other people. And Jake and I were talking on the way up and we decided that uh, they would just introduce me. He would introduce me as his friend from Saskatchewan. Because uh, we didn't know if we were going to end up coming here or not. So I would be Jake's friend from Saskatchewan on that morning. Um, now, in, in retrospect, I realized that the people there uh, should have known that something was up. Because uh, like we all realized, right, that, that Jake has no friends. So, uh, actually, Jake has lots of friends. And I trust they're all sort of coming to his defense now on the Facebook feed and maybe Jake only has one less friend now after I made that joke. But So we had this like amazing weekend. And the fact is, what the weekend did for us, it just confirmed what we already knew, that we knew that we were coming to love PAC. Uh, we were loving who this church was and who this church wanted to be in the community. Uh, and we were loving the people that we were getting to meet. We loved the church. So, so what about the town? What about moving to Portage? You see, we, we had heard some things about Portage. And as, as we were getting, you know, talking more seriously about moving here, we heard more things about Portage. So someone said to us, oh, if you're going to move there, you got to lock up your bikes. Now, that's true. Uh, it's good advice, but the fact is I had had two bikes stolen from my backyard in Karenport, Saskatchewan, in the last two summers. So I kind of feel like the, the mean streets of Karenport had prepared me for life in Portage. Uh, we, we heard as well as we talked with people about some of the very real challenges and issues that are in play in town here. There's, that, that there's issues of poverty. There can be issues of, of racial challenges that come in into play here. We were hearing those kinds of things. And, and let's not forget the trains, right? It, if, if you're going to live in Portage, you've got to be prepared to sit at railway crossings every now and then and just count the rail cars as they go by. And I think my record from a couple weeks ago is 160 cars uh, I counted on a train heading, heading by when I sat at 8th Street there. So we're excited about the church. What about the town? And you know, th these questions extend beyond Portage because a big part of my role, if I was going to be coming here, would be uh, spending time in Nipua and Dauphin and places like this. And, and there's challenges. These places have challenges of their own, don't they? So do I want to spend this next season of my life driving a single-lane highway through a Manitoba winter to be heading through to these rural hubs throughout the province. So lots of questions in play for us. And we're here. So you know how we ended up answering those questions. And legitimately, let me say this, uh, legitimately, we love this place and the people that we've met here. Uh, if, if you're my Facebook friend, then you will know just how much we are loving this place and exploring this place and taking advantage of everything that it offers us. Uh, but the fact is, a big part of that journey and that love that we have for this place is, is just tapping into the love that PAC has for Portage and Nipua and Dauphin. Right? From the very beginning of getting to know the church here, we found ourselves compelled by one of the four prayers that that pack has. We're, we're looking at these four prayers or these four loves um, that we have as a church. And one of them, if you think of it as a prayer, it's, it's a prayer that the places that we live would be award-winning towns. Yeah, it's true that a lot of people know the places that we live for all the wrong reasons. What I love is that PAC is a church that is committed to flipping that script. We're, we're committed to praying for God's blessing and abundance to be poured out in this place. And not just praying for it. We've got this deep heart commitment that we would be a part of that blessing and abundance. That we would be the channels, the conduits that it flows through. That, that we'd be praying towards and working towards God's kingdom coming here on earth in these towns as it is in heaven. 
And so that raises a new, more exciting question. What, what if our towns were known for all the right reasons? Like, like free coffee on a Sunday morning. What, what if our towns were known for all the right reasons? Could, could that even happen? Well, I want us to look at a parable this morning, one of Jesus' parables that, that tells us that it can. In fact, I think this parable tells us that this is not only God's desire for our towns, it, it's actually his design. Here's the parable. It's, it's one of the shortest that Jesus tells. We find it in Matthew 13. It's in Luke 13 as well. And he says this, Jesus told the people still another parable. The kingdom of heaven, he said, is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. The, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, is like a woman. If you want to know what God's kingdom is like, it's, it's like a woman making bread. Now, now, this would be a really common image in Jesus' day, right? This is common practice for, for women to make bread for their families. Give us this day our daily bread, we pray. And that, that's because that was a daily practice for these people. So a very common image, but there's actually something really uncommon about this picture that, that I want us to notice together. Uh, two things, actually. Something really short here, but... It would be very interesting, it's kind of unusual that Jesus, in telling us what God is like, Jesus points us to a woman in a kitchen making bread, something so common and ordinary. That, that would have been strange for the people in his audience that day. The kingdom of heaven is, is like this woman in a kitchen, but, but that helps us to appreciate the, the humility of our God and the fact that he has eyes for and honors those who so many others would just push aside and not notice. But, but the main thing that I want us to notice in all of this is that this woman uh, who's making bread it is making a lot of bread. So if, if she was making bread for her family, if she was making daily bread, then then this much flour from Walmart is more than enough to make your bread for a day, right? But this isn't the amount of flour that she's using, Jesus says. So, so maybe she's having some extended family that's coming over or some of her friends in, in, in her community. So maybe she needs a second bag of flour to make that bread. But this isn't the amount of bread that Jesus is talking about. The text tells us that she mixed the yeast into a large amount of flour. And the actual wording there, some of our translations are going to say uh, three measures of flour. The, the actual Greek was three satas of flour. That was an ancient measurement. And if you do the translation work and you do the calculation... The amount of bread that this woman, the amount of flour that this woman is using is, is about this much. Uh, about 60 pounds of flour that she's using. And, and it becomes clear all of a sudden, doesn't it, that, that this woman is not just making a few buns for her family. She is feeding a village. That this is enough bread, this will make enough bread for about 150 people. She's feeding a village. She's throwing a party. And there's something in this that I don't want us to miss at the very beginning of digging into this text. It, it, it's this, this picture that the kingdom of God is not about me and my needs. Right? That the kingdom of God, there's something about the kingdom of God that is about abundance and sharing and generosity. So a little later, Jesus is going to say, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who throws a wedding banquet for his son, and he throws open the door, and the wedding hall is filled with guests. Everybody finds a place at the table in this king, in, at this banquet. 
The kingdom of God, he's going to say in another place. Well, he's going to demonstrate in another place. The kingdom of God is loaves and fish for 5,000 men besides women and children. Enough food that everybody eats and has their fill and there are basketfuls left over. The, the kingdom of heaven is about abundance and generosity and sharing. It is not about me and my family having our needs met. It, it, it's not about just me and my needs. Right? And, and Nathan pressed against that a couple weeks ago in his message when, when he said that your religious experience is not the most important thing in what God is up to in the world. There's something much bigger, much grander that God is calling you into. And, and it's not even about your friends and family having their, like, being fed, right? We can sometimes think of church that way, that, that as long as my kids have good programs and as long as, as I like the music that's played on Sunday morning and there's good coffee in the foyer, then, then I, it, it's kind of a comfortable approach to this whole church thing. The kingdom of God is not about your comfort. And Lydia pressed against that in her message last week when, when she invited us to see Jonah very uncomfortable with God's mercy being shown to the Ninevites. But, but God's love for and mercy for the nations is way more important than our comfort. No, the, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is about feeding a village. And for us, that village is Nipua. That village is Dauphin. That village is portage. And, and if we get this into our minds, then, then we can say, along with the prophet Isaiah, come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. That the kingdom of heaven is about feeding a village. Well, how's that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen by the yeast being worked into the flour. Now in Jesus' day, they wouldn't necessarily have a little jar of fermapan in their fridge with grains of yeast. Rather, the way that yeast or leaven would, would be used in that day would be a, a lump of fermented dough. Right? Kind of like what we do with sourdough today still. You have a, you have a lump of dough that's already fermented and, and you take that lump and, and you mix it into a new mixture. And, and that lump doesn't need to be very big, does it? Someone's estimated that for 60 pounds of flour, you might need four pounds of this kind of leavened dough. It doesn't have to be very big. But the yeast then expands and spreads through the whole batch. And you know, there's nothing very impressive about a lump of dough, is there? You'd never imagine the impact that it could have. And, and that's what makes this such a powerful picture for life in the kingdom of God. Because if, if we're honest, in our life with Jesus, it almost always seems like the challenges are bigger than our resources. All right? Do, do you ever feel that way? Does it ever feel like in your life with Jesus that the challenges are way bigger than your resources? Because you know what? When we look around our towns, it's true. There are legitimate issues and problems in these places. Social problems, racial problems, economic problems. People are broken. Marriages are breaking. And it can feel like, like these challenges are way bigger than the resources 
that we have? How are we going to make a difference in the midst of all of that? Why haven't we made more of a difference? Right? It can feel sometimes like we're, we're declaring this good news that the kingdom of God is here and we want to feed our community the bread of life, but sometimes it feels like we're just a lump of dough. But the secret, you see, uh, the secret is found in the nature of yeast. Because yeast has this, this amazing dynamic to it that a small amount of yeast will work all the way through a large amount of dough. It, it has an expansive power to it. It's invasive and expansive. It starts small. But over time, it spreads everywhere until nothing remains untouched or unaffected. You see, this is the nature of yeast. It takes root, and then it takes over. And Jesus says, that's what the kingdom of God is like. It takes root, and then it takes over. And if you've met Jesus, if you have had the seeds of the kingdom uh, find good soil in your heart, <laughs> then you've experienced this in your life, haven't you? You've experienced what it's like for God's presence to, to take root and then to take over. It spreads into every aspect of your life and it begins to change you from the inside out. Changes the things you love and the things that you live for. It changes the way that you spend your time and your money. It changes that the things that you hold on to and the things that you're willing to let go of. That gradually, over time, as it works its way through everything within us, we become more and more like Jesus because God's presence takes root and then it takes over. And, and, and you know, if, if you haven't experienced that yet, it, it might be that, that those seeds of God's presence haven't, haven't penetrated yet. Maybe you're resisting opening up your life and your heart to that power. Oh man, let, let that life within and just see where it will take you. It, because this is God's plan for us. That the expansive power of God would work through every area of our lives. But here's what I want us to notice on this day when we're talking about being a part of award-winning towns. I want us to recognize this, that this is not only God's plan for us, this is also his plan through us. That like yeast gets worked all through the dough, that we would be agents of God's love and peace and forgiveness and reconciliation in our homes and our neighborhoods and our offices and our communities and the world. God's desire and his design is that the kingdom of God and those who represent it would have an increasingly dramatic effect on the world. That we would become people who are known for turning the world upside down. Like it says in Acts 17, and like our church has grabbed onto. Oh man, we want to be people who turn our world upside down. That's a powerful picture. This parable that we're looking at today speaks of the potential we have to be a part of the transformation of our towns. That we can play a part in our towns becoming award-winning towns by the power of the Holy Spirit. But here's the thing. That only happens if the yeast is worked into the dough, right? If, if that lump of sourdough is left separate from the rest of the flour, th then everything is ruined. You ever made uh, a batch of dough in your bread maker and forgotten to add the yeast? 
Now, it's a lovely paperweight, right? And we've got to see here that there is a danger for us in the ways that we sometimes live as the church. Because sometimes it seems like we, we get together with all of the rest of the yeast. All right? We get together on Sunday morning, and we get together at house church, and we get together in our prayer group, and we get together at our, at our kids' day camp, and, and we're yeasting it up. Like it is so yeasty. but we're not involved, we're not engaged with the rest of the flower. And you know, it, it's been said sometimes that we can be so busy running the church and going to church that we can neglect being the church. And, and that is not the picture of the kingdom that Jesus is painting here. He wants us to be a part of the transformation of our towns. When we visited last year, one of the phrases I remember Nathan saying to me is that uh, as a church, we want to be about transformation, not abdication. We want to be about the transformation of our towns, not abdication from our towns. That, and that's what this parable is, is talking about. You know, there's another picture of the church that offers the same warning. This isn't from the Bible. It's from a book that I, that I read a few years ago. Uh, and the author suggested that the church is like manure. Uh, and there's some people watching right now that are saying that's exactly what the church is like. Um, the church is like manure. In, in this way, he was saying, uh, you, you pile it together and it stinks up the neighborhood. But if you spread it out, it enriches the world. And pack. Uh, we, we are all so excited to come back together, right? Uh, I know that I am. I can't wait for this building to have people in it. We're excited to come back together. Please realize this. Us coming back together is not so that we leave behind our neighbors or our community or our town. We come back together to encourage us and to empower us as we spread out to enrich our towns. So, if we're going to play a part in making our towns award-winning towns, there's, there's a few things that we need to do. We, we need to go deep, right? We need to get invested and involved in the rhythms, uh, the rhythms of the people around us and the communities where we live. You know, I love the way that our Neep peeps, that's what the cool kids call the people in Nipua. Uh, I love the way that our Neep peeps were totally engaged with their community in the midst of the flooding a month ago. That the day after all that flooding, Ryland and others were there sandbagging shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the community. And then when our church there put a posting on Facebook uh, wanting to encourage the community and wanting to uh, offer help or support to anyone that needed it, those posts that our church put up uh, in those days, those posts were picked up by the Chamber of Commerce up there and by some other local businesses. And in the end, almost 20,000 people were reached by those posts Be because the yeast was going deep. It was engaged in and being a blessing to the community around it. So, we need to go deep. And we, we need to go quiet. You know, the fact is, we won't always, or often, or maybe ever get noticed by 20,000 people. And the fact is, that's not why we do it, right? There's actually interesting wording in this parable. So when, when, when the parable says that the woman uh, mixed the yeast into the flour, the word that Jesus actually used there was that she hid the yeast in the flour. She hid it. And, and there's a bit of a clue there 
to the reality that the kingdom of God is not only sometimes very small, like a mustard seed or like yeast, it's also often hidden. That God's work often goes unnoticed. It's quiet. Let's face it. Uh, Nobody notices yeast. (laughs) Nobody raves about the taste of this yeast. No, in a very powerful way, the yeast actually kind of gives itself away. It gives itself over to the dough. It's absorbed by the dough and it spreads throughout it and transforms it from the inside out, quietly, but powerfully. And and, and we need to learn what it is to go quiet. Realize this. That, that the goal here is not that our church would become known for the transformation of our town. The goal is that our church would be a part of the transformation of our town, whether anybody realizes it or not. And, and when you look at your own world, when you look at what it might mean for you to go quiet. Here's the reality. Nobody may ever notice the way that you carefully and quietly care for your neighbor. No one may stand up and cheer when you pay for someone's groceries at Walmart. No one may notice when you serve on the board of a community group for year after year after year. That's okay. Go deep and go quiet, giving yourself away. That's the way of the kingdom. And lastly, we we need to go confident. You know, at the heart of this parable is, is this reality that the kingdom of God starts small but grows and expands until nothing is untouched. Here's the thing. That takes time, right? The full growth is assured from the moment the yeast hits the dough. The full growth is assured. But but it's going to take time. It's a process for that to work through. So, be patient with yourself. Be patient with each other. Be, Be patient with the church. And remain open to his transforming power in you and through you. You know, next month, when things are opening up here and opening up in Nipua, uh, next month we're also going to have a cluster of people meeting in a living room in Dauphin. That's going to be the beginning of our new site in Dauphin. And you know what? It's going to be pretty small. It's going to be pretty modest. And, And some people might even wonder, oh man, given all the stuff that's going on in Dauphin, the challenges that are there, what, what do you expect to accomplish from a cluster of people meeting in a living room? What well, it's pretty clear from this parable. I expect that we're going to feed a village. I expect the seeds of the kingdom to take root there and then to take over. I expect God's expansive power to to work all the way through the people in that room, in their lives and through their lives. And yeah, it will start small, but it will grow large because the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. And so I'm confident about this. It's the same confidence that Paul had when he was writing to the Philippians. I'm confident of this, that he who began a good work in you He who begins a good work in Dauphin will bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Because the kingdom of heaven is like yeast, friends. So go deep, go quiet, and go confident. But go, but go. Amen. Let's, uh, let's sing together as we think about these things.
I don't wanna be afraid Every time I face the waves I don't wanna be afraid I don't wanna be afraid I don't wanna fear the storm Just because I hear the roar I don't wanna fear the storm I don't wanna fear the storm I'm not gonna be afraid Cause these waves are only waves I'm not gonna be afraid, no I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna fear the storm You are greater than it's a roar I'm not gonna fear the storm
You know, it, uh, it might be intimidating to think about those places where God might be calling you to go deep. That, that might be scary. Um, it might be intimidating to think about who he might want you to come alongside of quietly. But I just want to say, don't be afraid. Step out. Like in the song we just sang, step out and take the risk. Know that you don't go into those spaces alone. You go with him. So, so let faith rise up in you. You know, we, we said at the beginning of the message that sometimes people know our towns for, for all the wrong reasons. Uh, what if people started to know our towns for all the right reasons? What, what if they started telling different stories, right? What if we uh, became known as the place where people of all nations and races live and worship together in unity and purpose? What if we became known as those places where people break the cycles of poverty and addiction, where marriages are restored because people are finding the healing and wholeness that only Jesus can offer them? What if we became known as, as people who are not only enjoying the benefits of the kingdom that are ours, but are, are actually giving that away to others generously so that every community in our province is experiencing the same blessing that we are? Those are the stories that I want to tell. Those are the stories that I want to be a part of. That's God's desire. And, and it's his design. And we do that together. And so, as we bring this time to a close, let me uh, pronounce this benediction over you for this side week. May we be filled to overflowing with the love of God. And as his true sons and daughters, be filled with his power to love, reconcile, and heal. May we bring together the things once torn apart and stand as family, side by side, united in his love. May it be so, Lord. Grace and peace as you go into this week.